Now we've already performed calculations involving the boiling point elevation, but in this video I'm going to seek to explain what's going on and what's the science behind boiling point elevation. So in order to understand boiling point elevation, we need to understand vapor pressure and boiling point. Now we've already studied vapor pressure and boiling point in the past. I'm going to talk about them briefly here. If you feel like you could benefit from more explanation, uh, go back and rewatch those videos from before. So let's take a quick look at vapor pressure. That's the pressure exerted by a gas that is at equilibrium with its liquid. So if we have a flask with water in it, the water will eventually evaporate. And in fact, it will evaporate until the flask is empty. Conversely, if we have the same flask with water in it, but we have a stopper on it, the water will evaporate, but it won't evaporate till the flask is empty. In fact, some of these water molecules, they will return back to the liquid. That's what I'm trying to show here. So what we have is some of the liquid is escaping into the gas phase, and some of the gas is returning to the liquid phase. When that's occurring at equal rates, that's equilibrium. So when this is at equilibrium, there will be some gas molecules up here bouncing around. The pressure that's exerted by those gas molecules, well, that's what vapor pressure is. So the gaseous water molecules produce collisions and exert a pressure. This is called vapor pressure. And just as a reminder, at equilibrium, the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. Now let's take a quick look at boiling point. If we have a flask with water in it, the atmosphere would push down with 760 millimeters of mercury. Now let's say we're going to heat this flask up, or rather heat this liquid up to 100 degrees C. You know as we begin to heat it, some of the water molecules evaporate, just like we saw before. Now this water molecule, um, as a gas, would bounce around and collide and exert a pressure. And as we continue to heat it up hotter and hotter, approaching 100 degrees, we would have increasingly more gas molecules bouncing around. So maybe now it's exerting a pressure of, I don't know, maybe 700 millimeters of mercury. Let's say we continue to heat it up more, we reach 100 degrees, and we have more gas molecules up here. And finally, these gas molecules are exerting 760 millimeters of mercury of pressure. You know what happens when the vapor pressure of this gas is equal to the atmospheric pressure pushing down? We have boiling. That's what boiling point is. The temperature at which a liquid's vapor pressure, that's this, is equal to atmospheric pressure. So we've reviewed vapor pressure and boiling point. Those would be two necessary, um, necessary things to understand as we look at boiling point elevation. <coughs> so just like before, we have a couple flasks. Atmospheric pressure is pushing down. But in the flask on the right, we have some dissolved solute particles. Keep in mind that evaporation occurs at the surface of the liquid. Now, we're going to attempt to heat both of these flasks up to 100 degrees C. Let's see what happens as we crank up the heat. Well, just like you'd expect, the one on the left, the liquid molecules escape into the vapor phase. And they exert a pressure until they finally exert a pressure of 760. And then that's when we have boiling. Now, this has reached 100 degrees. Let's heat this one up. Uh, keeping in mind that solute particles do not contribute to vapor pressure. In fact, they block water molecules from evaporating. So once again, these solute particles here don't contribute to vapor pressure. What they do is, th is they, they interfere with the water that's leaving the surface. So they actually prevent water molecules from escaping into the gaseous phase. So let's heat this up to 100 degrees C. 
So we're heating it, we're getting molecules um, being produced, and these molecules are contributing to some pressure. Now, because these molecules here, these solute molecules, or solute particles, um, have restricted how many liquid molecules enter the gas phase, um, maybe we only have 740 millimeters of mercury. And you know that in order for boiling to occur, the vapor pressure of the liquid has to be equal to atmospheric pressure. So in order to make these vapor molecules exert more pressure, we have to heat this sample up hotter than 100 degrees C. In fact, we might have to heat it up to 102, 103 degrees, maybe 105 degrees. But in order to get it to boil, the vapor pressure of these gas molecules will have to equal the pressure that's pushing down. So I hope this was able to clear up maybe just a little bit uh, how boiling point elevation um, occurs.